I'm currently in a forest in Snowdonia, surrounded by bloody flies. If you're anything like me, you'll use YouTube as a tool quite often to find out information on certain things. Not really a big fan of doing reviews and how to's and all that malarkey. I've got a rucksack that when I was buying it, nobody told me how much you can get in it. And the size of this rucksack doesn't really sound worth the investment. I now think it is worth the investment. So I'll give you an idea as to how much kit I can get in it. So you can decide whether you want to buy it or not. So one of the main draws to this rucksack are the fact that you can sit on it and it'll hold my weight. Now I know I'm only very petite, but it's doing a good job. There's a bit of a running joke in our house and on this channel that I quite like Fjall Raven kit and it's no secret, I do. I've paid for every single item of it. They have no idea who we are so we don't get free kit from them. Although, if they feel like giving us some free kit, there's probably not a lot left in the range for to give us but I don't mind trying a few bits. This is the Fjall Raven Stuben, they call it. Just keeping an eye on the dog. Stuben is Swedish for tree stump. The idea behind that is because you can sit on it and it's rock solid, it's a lot like a tree stump. So the rucksack comes as standard without these side pockets here. These are additional extras. I've bought the two Singy side pockets, which are, I think, four litres each. And then the two Singy gear holders on the top Singy gear holder, I'm pretty sure, is designed to, because it's got a, a pull open top, it's designed to have a rifle down there. So you can sit it at the bottom of your pack, have your rifle in there, and have a strap going down these daisy chains to hold the top of your rifle. I don't shoot, so I haven't got a rifle. So I've got other stuff in there instead. Let's bring it in for a closer look. Come on. So in this top gear holder, Nice little handle, pull it open and it's done. And you can easily fit a one and a half litre bottle in there, maybe more. I did have this camera that I'm filming on in this pocket, so it's currently empty. This is where I'm a little bit peeved with Fiona 11. The attention to detail. So you've got this little G clamp on the front, a nice locking G clamp. But then the same clamps on the gear pockets don't match but anyway simple little buckle and it's open so in here I've got what's it called it's a hydro pack it's basically a bottle that folds down into nothing 750 mil just there in case I need to collect water but then when I haven't got water in it, it packs down to very little I've also got my Catadem B free water filter if you haven't seen one of these before, you simply just fill that from the stream, river, canal, toilet, whatever you want. And that filter there will filter all the nasties out. And then it's got a little zinc top on there, or you can just squeeze it into something like that. This is new to me, part of it is anyway. So this little system. Got a a one litre Nalgene bottle, that's the bit that's not too new to me. But then I've got this Snow Peak, uh, I think it's called Titanium Solo Cook 2.0 or something ridiculous like that. But it's basically a 450ml mug, titanium mug, and then a 750ml titanium pot that nests inside and then you've got a lid with a nice little rubbery nipple on it so it's easy to take the lid off it's good that I haven't used it yet but it looks good let's turn around to the other side in this gear holder I've simply just got a little what, MSR doesn't matter what make it is but a little towel first aid kit don't think I've 
ever needed the first aid kit while I've been out, but if you're carrying tools and stuff, it's always good to have a, a kit. To close these as well, you just grab that, grab that, done. It's not the most sophisticated of rucksack back systems. It's simply just a very well padded back, very well padded straps. That is not to do with the rucksack, that's just my Peak Designs capture clip which attaches my camera to it so when I'm walking I've got my camera on my strap. You've got these little loops here that you can attach carabiners onto or anything like that. It is actually a surprisingly comfortable pack to carry even when you've got quite a bit of weight in it. It's not for backpacking, it's not for overnighters unless you're extremely like you know minimal. It's actually designed for hunting I believe. I don't do hunting but it's ideal for hunting bushcraft you know you can get quite a bit of kit in here and you've got your seat and all that stuff wildlife photography you're in the forest or the field or whatever this acts like a seat when you're doing your photography and oh, flies are all around the dog because he's eating tripe back in a minute our dog feet is fed raw so just give him some raw tripe and the flies were all over him another thing it's ideal for is fishing you sit down when you're fishing I'll try and keep this snappy because the wind has died down <laughs> and the flies are coming back and Jack is like a Venus fly trap. Oh my god, they're everywhere. So you've then got the top lid. The top lid has a little pocket on the front. I've got my little mushroom book because I want to start foraging. I've got my Primus long spoon for my freeze dried meals. Little Victorinic Swiss card with a knife and scissors and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Dog's going berserk here. Little foraging bag, so you just have that on your belt or whatever. Pull that open, you've got a nice bag that opens up to catch your mushrooms and what have you. Cordage, never used it, bought it a couple of months ago. Still in my bag just in case. And then there's a couple of straps that you get with the gear holder. So that will attach into the side of this rucksack. It doesn't matter whether it's a rifle or a tripod for a camera. If you put something in that pocket, you can then secure the top of it to your rucksack as well. One good thing about this rucksack as well, is you can open it. There's the seat by the way, very solid seat. You can open it from the top. You've got a drawstring opening. Or, you can also unzip the front and then it all just comes out like that. But for this video's purpose, just take everything out one by one, eh? So I've got a little collapsible bowl for the dog. Got this little GSI outdoor kitchen set with oil bottles and utensils and all that caper. Got a bounty. This is me making a fire bag. So this is a, I don't know, it's got to be 20 centimetres maybe. It's got my fat ward and a, a big aluminium reflector and a couple of tins, my little ropey fire lighty thing. Tins have got cotton wool with Vaseline and the other one's just a fire steel and lighter and matches. A few of those white, I keep saying wire wool, wax wool type things, and then me, me Soto lighter, windproof lighter. I really like this. This is a David Fryer's bag. He's he's just a, a, a guy from down south who's into his outdoor stuff and his bushcraft and what have you, and makes these bags himself. Bloody good quality as well. I've just ordered two more, which should be here early next week. But that's just got. Like things like tissues, little tongs, titanium tongs, coffee bags, spud peeler, little Naldine bottle with olive oil, little salt and pepper dispenser thing, something to scrub your pans with, a little MSR thing it is, with a brush and like a plasticky bit. Oppenel number eight, knife. 
little chopping board and a scouring pad. I've got a little freeze dried meal. What is it? I think it's chicken tikka or something like that. Real time, good kit. Little multi mat kneel down sit pad thing. Got my OS map. Shell having granite shirt. This is important. This is a Grand Force Brook um, small forest axe and it just fits in this rucksack height wise. So I I was buying both of these roughly at the same time and I knew the majority of time I used this axe it would <laughs> it would be in this bag and I didn't know whether it would fit or whether I'd have to have it on the outside and when you're walking in certain areas in the UK you can't just have an axe sitting on the outside of your bag so it just just fits inside new purchase for me I've just truck delivery a couple of days ago the Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box LF Titanium Premium Set to cut it short. And then me Hestra, I think the Fault Fault Guide gloves. They're really good in the winter, but I brought them for handling hot pans and what have you. And then finally, got a little pocket at the front. Some more unwinterized leather gloves just for cutting wood and stuff. A little heat proof mad, mad, mat. One of those welders type things to go underneath my bush box to stop the ground from sc scorching. Barco Laplander saw. Fits nicely in this front pocket. As you can see, just a tiny bit too wide so you might just have to have it slightly at an angle. Got me more a companion knife and <laughs> another new purchase I've just bought this little Oppenel mushroom knife it's a bit of a gimmick but you chop your mushroom stalks down with that side and then you dust them off with the brush how nifty is that there's hardly any mushrooms around here I expected them to be quite a lot maybe next time I've got one of the pockets and one of the things I should have mentioned as well is when you've got this gear pocket on top it's a little bit of a faff to get into the bottom depending on what you've got in the bottom pocket in the bottom pocket I've got a half litre Nalgene bottle I've also got a little 400ml, 500ml, 600ml uh, Less old, less oct bottle for the dog. But basically, you flip that up. It's a bowl. You push that little button in there, squeeze the bottle, and it fills with water. The good thing about this is, you let go of it, and most of the water sucks back in. Get rid of a bit of excess, but push that button and it's sealed. Another thing I didn't mention as well, these pockets simply just attach with a little loop, a little toggle that goes through this daisy chain that goes all the way down the front and back of both sides of the rucksack. So you can just Attach and unattach whatever you like. So you've got that section there. Obviously, that does exactly the same. You can have a whole side so you can strap poles, skis, whatever to the side of this using straps through this little daisy chain system. I hope that's a bit of a useful insight to, to this rucksack for you. As I say, I don't really do reviews, I don't do how to's, but I rely on YouTube a lot tell me about kit that I'm looking to buy 
And there are a few videos out there with this rucksack. Feel free to go and watch them because they've probably done a much better job than I have. But this is just me emptying my mind of the thoughts that I have on this rucksack. So far, I love it. It's made of the G1000 material, which these trousers are. Um, quite a lot of my clothing and bags and all kinds are made of G1000. It's tough as old boots. It's windproof. It's very, um, like, bramble resistant if you like if that's even a bloody word you can wax it you can rub it on with the the fjord oven wax which is i think it's paraffin oil and beeswax you rub it in and then heat it up and it, it so soaks into the material protects the material and keeps the water out a bit better I'm gonna make a brew now and potentially go home because these flies are not shifting and a dog is literally going crazy for them trying to catch every single one of them. Let me know if stuff like this is of interest to you. It won't be of interest to a lot of people who subscribe to us because you don't watch us for crap like this. But then there will be some people and some people do genuinely ask me about the kit I use. So there's a small minority that will. And if you're brand new here because you found this video, then let me know what else you want to see because I've got loads to show you. See you later.